This conference will now be recorded. So we have been discussing of, about the pathogenesis of glomerular injury. Mainly the glomerular injury is immune mediated. Immune mediated injury occurs to the glomerulus and leads to the glomerular injury. So immune mediated injury is the main mechanism of injury to the glomerulus. So and this immune injury can be in the form of an antibody mediated injury. So or it could be in situ immune complexes. So immune complexes that is antigen and antibody complexes which can get deposited on the basement membrane and cause injury or fixed intrinsic tissue antigen or there may be some antigen so the, which can also cause the glomerular injury. So the antigen can be that is fixed tissue antigen which can be within the basement membrane. For example, NCI the domain of collagen type 4 antigen which is located within the basement membrane, which is an antigen, collagen type 4 antigen, that is NCI, which causes anti-glomerular, that is anti-glomerular basement membrane nephritis. So very important. Other antigen, which is fixed tissue antigen, which cause glomerular injury, is Heyman antigen. The condition is membranous glomerulopathy, which causes the immune injury to the glomeruli. Similarly, the mesangial antigen also can cause injury to the glomeruli. So antibody mediated, immune complexes in situ or antigen in situ antigen, fixed intrinsic antigen in the glomerular basement membrane. That is nothing but collagen type 4 antigen which cause anti-GBM nephritis. Next, Heyman antigen which causes membranous glomerulopathy as well as mesangial antigen which causes the injury to the glomerulus. So you can also have that is fixed intrinsic tissue antigen or you can have antigen which are exogenous like any infectious agent or any drugs can act as antigen or you can have endogenous antigen which is within the glomeruli such as antigen against the DNA then nuclear protein, antigen, nuclear proteins can act as antigen, immunoglobulins can act as antigen, immune complexes can act as antigen and IgA, for example, in case of IgA nephropathy. Next, you can have immune complexes within the circulation which can cause injury to the glomeruli. So immune complexes, that is circulating immune complexes which get deposited on the basement membrane and cause the glomeruli injury to the glomeruli. So already we have discussed endogenous antigen within the glomeruli that is DNA antigen, any tumor antigen which are endogenous antigen, exogenous antigen which are from the circulation can cause injury to the glomeruli. For example, infectious agent, cytotoxic antibody, antibodies that is antigen which is expressed by the cell and antibodies against the cell. So cytotoxic antibodies, antibodies which injure the cell. So which are nothing but cytotoxic antibodies, which also cause injury to the glomeruli. And also to some extent, cell-mediated immune injury also occurs to the glomeruli. Cell-mediated immune injury. Also, the activation of alternative complement pathway can cause injury to the glomeruli. Next. In situ immune complex deposition. <coughs> you can have circulating immune complex deposition. In situ immune complex deposition, which causes circulating immune complexes, which get deposited in the glomeruli. In situ, that is antigen, which is then intrinsically within the glomeruli, which evokes the antibody response. So that is in situ immune complex deposition. So the antibodies react against intrinsic tissue antigen, which could be DNA antigen, any tumor antigen, so which can cause antibody formation. Antigen planted in the glomerulus from the circulation. Any antigen in the circulation which gets planted in the glomerulus and evokes an antibody response causing in situ immune complex deposition. Next, anti-tissue antibody mediated glomerular injury. Any tissue within the glomeruli, glomerular tissue, any glomerular tissue can evoke the antibody, antibodies against it. 
which can cause anti tissue antibody mediated glomerular injury <clears throat> ultimately what is mainly important what is importance of the glomerular injury glomerular injury is mainly immune mediated and this immune mediated injury can occur due to deposition of the circulating immune complexes any immune complexes in the circulation can cause can cause injury to the glomeruli that is circulating immune complexes can cause injury to the glomeruli or anti gbm antibody induced nephritis or antibody against the glomerular basement membrane can cause injury to the glomeruli so mainly two types circulating immune complexes anti glomerular basement membrane antibody which can cause injury to the glomeruli anti glomerular basement membrane antibodies are directed against any fixed antigen like any intrinsic tissue antigen or intrinsic fixed antigen it could be dna nuclear proteins or any any of these nuclear proteins or dna so antibodies against intrinsic fixed antigen which are nothing but the normal component of glomerular basement membrane so the antibodies in the glomeruli are produced due to the fixed antigen intrinsic fixed antigen antigen of the dna nuclear protein which are being expressed and antibodies which are produced again that can cause injury to the glomerular basement membrane now a simple experiment that was being performed to study the glomerular injury so how they have done very very important so what they did is they have selected an animal like rat so and from the rat they have taken the rat kidney tissue now once they have taken the rat kidney tissue they have injected into a rabbit so since the rat kidney tissue is foreign to the rabbit so what will happen so in the rabbit you have ra anti rat kidney antibodies so what they did is they selected an animal like rat and the organ of the rat that they selected was a kidney and they took the kidney tissue and injected into the rabbit so since it is foreign to the rabbit what will happen you have antibodies against the rat tissue so that the and rat tissue is acting kidney tissue is acting as anti antigen in the rabbit so you have anti rat kidney antibodies now what they did they have taken anti rat kidney antibodies and they have injected into another rat so what happens so this anti rat kidney antibodies what happens is so this acts as an antigen for that particular rat so what will happen so so what will happen the antibodies are being produced against this anti rat kidney immunoglobulin so anti gbm causing anti gbm glomerular nephritis and whatever antibodies which are produced in the glomeruli they bind along the entire length of the glomerular basement membrane so what you have in the in the glomeruli you have <coughs> diffuse thickening of the glomeruli so because the antibodies bind along the entire length of the glomeruli leading to diffuse thickening of glomeruli so in the immunofluorescence you know that what you appreciate is diffuse linear pattern because of antibodies which are deposited against the entire length of the glomeruli so what we did we selected and so this shows what exactly happens in the glomeruli of a rat a simple experiment so what what is the mechanism of glomerular injury what do you observe that all you can know by this particular experiment they have selected an animal like a rat taken its kidney tissue injected into the rabbit and since it is an antigen to the rabbit you have anti rat kidney antibodies now they they have taken this anti rat kidney antibodies injected into another rat so what will happen it acts as an antigen in that particular rat and you will have antibodies which are produced against this particular immunoglobulin that is anti rat kidney antibody you have anti gbm anti glomerular basement membrane glomerular nephritis these act as an antigen anti rat kidney antibodies and you have antibodies deposited for this so in another rabbit so what you have is glomerular injury will occur in that particular rat now the antibodies whatever they produced 
that deposited along the entire length of the glomerula in a diffuse pattern very very important so whatever antibodies are produced against this particular immunoglobulin that is anti rat kidney antibody whatever immunoglobulin anti rat kidney so the antibodies are produced in this particular rat that binds along the entire length of the glomerular basement membrane in case of that 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 rat and you have diffuse thickening of the glomerular basement membrane because of deposition of antibodies along the entire length of the glomerular basement membrane and in the kidney what the, what is most important is electron microscopic features next light microscopic and immunofluorescence in immunofluorescence you will have diffuse linear pattern of deposition of antibodies diffuse linear pattern of deposition of antibodies in the immunofluorescence so immunofluorescence what you have is diffuse linear pattern of deposition of immuno that means diffuse linear pattern of deposition of these antibodies you can appreciate in diffuse fashion on the glomerular in immunofluorescence so what what did you learn after this particular experiment so you know what happened they injected anti glomerular basement antibody of the rabbit immunoglobulin acted as foreign to the host as an antigen so you had antibodies against this immunoglobulin in in rat so what 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 is the concept that you got out of this experiment so whatever anti glomerular basement antibodies of the rabbit that you have got so that you have injected into another rat so anti glomerular basement membrane antibody which was developed for the kidney tissue of the rat which acted as antigen you had anti glomerular basement membrane antibody of the rabbit that you have injected into another rat this had acted as an immunoglobulin and it was foreign to the host and this immunoglobulin acted as an antigen it was foreign to another rat acted as antigen and you had antibodies against this particular immunoglobulin that is antibodies against this particular that is anti gbm antibody whatever immunoglobulin is there for that you had developed antibodies so anti igg antibodies in the rat you had got in another rat and these antibodies the rat antibodies then react with the rabbit immunoglobulin on the basement membrane so so for this immunoglobulin that is anti gbm antibody immunoglobulin that is rat that rabbit immunoglobulin acted as antigen to the rat and to in the rat they, there was development of antibody so the rabbit the rat antibodies reacted with the rabbit immunoglobulin and it was deposited on the glomerular basement membrane so these antibodies causing diffuse linear pattern of deposition of the immune complexes that is antigen antibody against the glomerular basement membrane causing glomerular injury so the rat the rat antibodies so which were produced against the rabbit immunoglobulin so rabbit immunoglobulin these antibodies react with the rabbit immunoglobulin that is nothing but anti glomerular basement membrane antibody of the rabbit that is rabbit immunoglobulin which reacted with rat antibodies and got deposited on the glomerular basement membrane causing the glomerular injury and these antibodies how they got deposited on the glomerular basement membrane in a diffuse linear pattern which we have appreciated on immunofluorescence and what happened is there is a cross reaction not only the anti rat antibodies are produced against the rabbit immunoglobulin also these rat antibodies also react with the lung alveoli so this condition occurs in the good pasteur syndrome the anti glomerular basement membrane antibodies cross react with the basement membrane of the lung alveoli for example in case of good pasteur syndrome so what happens in good, good pasteur syndrome so that is anti gbm antibodies whatever glomerular basement membrane antibodies which are produced also in the rat they also react with the lung alveoli so these antibodies react with the lung alveoli and this you can see in case of good pasteur syndrome the antibodies produced against the glomerular basement membrane reacted against the lung in the lung alveoli cross react causing 
good pasture syndrome. Now, glomerular basement antigen. What is the antigen in the glomerular basement membrane? NCI domain of alpha 3, which is nothing but collagen type 4 antigen. So, what is the antigen in the glomerular basement membrane? NCI domain of alpha 3. NCI domain of alpha 3, which is nothing but collagen type 4, a chain of collagen type 4 antigen. <coughs> NCI domain of alpha 3, which is nothing but a chain of collagen type 4 antigen. Finally, the circulating immune complex nephritis. So we have uh, dealt that the antigen and antibodies which are there in the circulation got trapped in the glomeruli, causing the glomerular injury. Now, what, what do you understand by circulating immune complex, in this, that is nephritis? The antigen and antibodies which are formed in the circulation get trapped within the glomeruli, causing glomerular injury. Antibodies have no immunological specificity. Very important points are, the antibodies have no immunological specificity for the glomerular constituents. Physico-chemical properties. So are there physico-chemical properties and hemodynamic factors? So play a major role in case of the glomerular injury. Whatever antigen antibody complexes which are formed in the circulation, that is circulating immune complexes, they're trapped in the glomeruli and cause the glomerular injury. And but what is most important to understand here is so antigen do not have any specificity for the glomeruli or glomerular constituent. What is important here in the glomeruli to cause uh, the deposition of circulating immune complexes? It is nothing but the physical chemical properties of the basement membrane or the glomeruli and also physical chemical properties as well as physical chemical properties of immune complexes as well as the basement membrane as well as hemodynamic factors. All these play an important role for the deposition of circulating immune complexes. Physical chemical properties of the immune complexes and the glomeruli as well as hemodynamic factors, all these cause deposition of the circulating immune complexes on the basement membrane. Glomeruli is innocent by standard. So what we understand is there is no specificity for antibodies to deposit on the glomeruli, but the what is more important are the physical chemical properties of the immune complexes and the glomeruli as well as hemodynamic factors which influences the deposition of the circulating immune complexes of the basement membrane. Antigens can be exogenous antigen, any infectious agent and endogenous antigens. For example, in case of systemic lupus erythematosus where you have so the DNA, nuclear proteins, all of them act as antigen and leading to the formation of antibody. So that is, so you can have exogenous antigens like infectious agent, endogenous antigen like systemic lupus erythematosus. So these antigens, they lead to the formation of immune complexes by development of the antibody. Certain microbial antigen, what are the microbial antigen? You can have streptococci antigen, Hepatitis B virus antigen, hepatitis C virus antigen, Tryponema pallidum, Plasmodium, and viruses. All these are microbial antigen. Microbial antigen, it can be streptococci, hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, Tryponema pallidum, Plasmodium, and, all, and viruses act as microbial antigen. Electron microscopy and immunofluorescence. So in case of kidney, it is very, very important, as I've already discussed, not only the light microscopy finding, electron microscopy finding, as well as immunofluorescence finding. So light microscopy, what you have to observe is the cellularity. You will have hypercellularity and the deposition of inflammatory cells, like monocytes, then you can have neutrophils deposition. So all this you can see in case of light microscopy. Electron microscopy in glomerulonephritis, what you see is the immune complex deposition, that is, that you observe in the form of lumps and bumps on the glomeruli. These are nothing but, these are nothing but immune complex deposition or electron dense deposits. So or the, the, which can be located in various places, like they can be located at the mesangium, subendothelial location in the basement membrane, 
or sub epithelial location in the basement membrane so that we can appreciate on electron microscopy so in electron microscopy you will you can know where exactly the immune complexes are deposited whether in the mesangium whether subendothelially or sub epithelially where the deposits are uh, deposited that you can appreciate on electron microscopy in immunofluorescence i've already said whether the deposits are granular deposit, deposits or whether they are diffuse linear deposit bits you can appreciate whether the deposits are in the granular fashion immune complexes along the basement membrane or whether they are in the form of diffuse linear pattern that you can appreciate so ultimately this is the structure of the glomeruli which is very very important so glomerular structure what you have here is so the outer lining which is parietal epithelium inner lining the visceral epithelium and what you have the space between the parietal and visceral epithelium you have what is called as a urinary space <coughs> and these are nothing but the loops of the glomeruli the loops of the glomeruli that is capillary loops of the glomeruli so with basement membrane on the basement membrane what you have appreciate here is the food process the food process on the basement membrane next this is nothing but rbc these are endothelial cells so the endothelial cells what you see here are the endothelial cells and in the center you have mesangial cells which have supportive supportive role so supportive role that is mesangial cells you can have supportive role in the center next endothelium with lot of fenestration that is fenestry of endothelium this all you can see so okay and within the capillary you have the capillary lumina see this is nothing but the glomeruli and this is nothing but the capillary loop capillary loops what you are seeing here and this is urinary space here you have the mesangial cells and these are nothing but rbcs and this is tubule so this is the structure of the glomeruli now when i'm talking about the electron microscopic finding i was speaking about the immune complex deposition whether it it is what are all the location that is immune complex deposition so i was speaking about sub epithelium so this is the basement membrane and you can see on electron microscopy the deposits which are located on the epithelium that is sub epithelial deposit this is the basement membrane sub epithelial deposit and this is you know that this is the endothelium so endothelium and here you have that is this is all the endothelium the entire this one is endothelium and you can see that sub endothelial deposit so you have the sub epithelial deposit you have so this is endothelium in the endothelium the inner aspect of the basement membrane that is sub endothelial deposit and here you can near the endothelium only you can see some more deposits of the immune complexes so these are the deposits that you can appreciate on the electron microscopy so electron microscopy immune complex deposition you can appreciate in the various location it could be sub epithelial basement membrane on the upper layer or outer aspect that is sub epithelial layer or you can have deposition sub on the inner aspect of the basement membrane that is sub endothelial near the endothelium sub endothelial deposits these are the deposits of circulating immune complexes so sub epithelial and sub endothelial deposits and what you see here are the food process and this is the finding that you see in case of immunofluorescence so the deposits the little spiky deposits so this is nothing but granular and the the appearance is granular so granular kind of immunofluorescence what you are appreciating so on immunofluorescence it is not looking as though they're straight they're all like spiky appearance what you see here so this is granular deposition of immunofluorescence granular deposition on immunofluorescence and also you can also appreciate on electron microscopy that sometimes the immune complexes are deposited along the basement membrane so this is the basement membrane and these are the immune complexes so the immune complexes are deposited along the basement membrane this is the basement membrane so along the basement membrane you have the antigen antibody complexes that is immune complexes deposited and in immunofluorescence 
Here you can see diffuse linear pattern. The deposition of the immune complexes is in the form of diffuse. There you have granular when the deposit was subepithelial or subendothelial deposit. There it was granular. And here you and here what you have is diffuse linear fashion of deposition of the glomeruli. Diffuse linear pattern. So diffuse. So the whatever deposits are there, that they are in a diffuse fashion. Diffuse fashion, they are being deposited. Diffuse linear. So you can see that there are no spikes here. Diffusely, you are seeing diffuse linear pattern. Whereas here, you are seeing that is granular, like spiky, spiky, granular deposits. Granular deposits of immunoglobulins when you have subepithelial and subendothelial deposition. When you have along the basement membrane, you what? Uh, kind of immunofluorescence, diffuse linear pattern. So immunofluorescence, only two things you have to remember, whether you have granular kind of immune complex deposition or diffuse linear pattern of deposition on immunofluorescence you have to see. <laughs> and on electron microscopy, the location of the deposits, whether it is subendothelial, subepithelial, or along the basement membrane. Usually, subepithelial and subendothelial deposits, you have granular kind of immunofluorescence. And when you have the deposition along the basement membrane, then you have linear kind of immunofluorescence. Other mechanisms which can lead to the glomerular injury. Antibodies can be produced against the glomerular cells. Antibodies to any planted antigen, externally planted antigen, antibodies can be produced other kind of injury which can occur to the glomeruli. For example, in Heyman's nephritis, Heyman antigen is there within the glomeruli where antibodies produced against this Heyman nephritis, cell-mediated immune mechanism which can cause in, that is injury to the glomeruli. Apart from that, alternative complement pathway can cause injury to the glomeruli. So antibodies can occur to the glomerular cells to the planted antigen either from externally or Heyman nephritis antibodies against the Heyman antigen, like in case of membranous glomerulopathy, cell-mediated injury can also cause injury to the glomeruli. Next, activation of alternative complement pathway can cause injury to the glomeruli. So apart from that, epithelial cell injury. So epithelial cell injury to the epithelial cells can also occur. Epithelial cells in the glomeruli injury can occur by antibodies and by certain by certain toxins and cytokines. So epithelial cells, whatever epithelial cells, visceral epithelial cells, which are located on the glomeruli. So antibodies can be produced against the epithelial cells. So there the antigens will be toxins or cytokines to which the antibodies are being produced, which causes injury to the epithelial cells. So epithelial cell injury, which can occur by the antibodies which are formed against the toxins or cytokines. Mediators of glomerular injury. What are the cells for inflammatory infiltrate, so which are formed within the glomeruli, which can cause injury to the glomeruli? Inflammatory cells like neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages, T lymphocytes, natural killer cells, platelet, and some glomerular cells. They can act as antigen and cause injury to the glomeruli. So certain inflammatory mediators like neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages, T lymphocytes, platelets, natural killer cells can cause injury to the glomeruli. Certain complement components like C5B, C9, can cause eicosanides, nitric oxide, angiotensin, endothelin, cyto cytokines like interleukin-1, tumor necrotic factor, chemokines, so macrophage colony stimulating factor, growth factors, coagulation system, fibrinolytic system, all these can cause injury to the glomeruli. So soluble factors including complement components that is C5BC9, eicosanide, nitric oxide, endothelin and angiotensin, cytokines like interleukin-1, TNF, chemokines, MCP, tumor growth factor, that is growth factors, coagulation system and fibrinolytic system can cause injury to the glomeruli. So the glomerular injury we finished and little bit about nephrotic syndrome we will be discussing. Uh, 
little bit about the necrotic syndrome we will be discussing so as so uh, what we have dealt with entirely about the glomerular injury so what happens immune mediated injury how the antigen antibodies form immune complex mediated the, the circulating immune complex mediated or in situ immune complex injury or anti glomerular basement membrane antibodies against fixed antigen or planted antigen certain certain times what happens is so certain intrinsic antigen like dna nuclear protein they act as antigen for which antibodies are formed and also certain complement uh, complement components can act as antigen certain soluble factors can act as antigen and uh, so various inflammatory cells can also act as antigen which lead to antibody formation and leading to glomerular injury we discussed about the electron microscopy findings how it, you know, how they will be how the deposits whether it is sub epithelial sub endothelial around the basement membrane and we have also discussed the immunofluorescence whether it is diffuse or granular diffuse linear deposition of the immune complexes or granular deposition of immune complexes so light microscopy also light microscopy also we have discussed so there glomerular injury is finished little bit about the nephrotic syndrome we will discuss already we have started so next class causes of nephrotic syndrome and all we will talk about talk. little bit so already we have discussed in the kidney the beginning of kidney clinical manifestation differences between nephrotic and nephritic syndrome so what happens in nephrotic syndrome we have massive proteinuria that is floating greater than 3.5 grams per day patient with hypoalbuminemia that is albumin less than 3 grams per cl hyperlipidemia generalized edema and lipiduria the lipid in urine and patient has no azotemia no hematuria or no hypertension so in nephrotic syndrome the patient has massive proteinuria proteins greater than 3.5 grams per day next edema generalized edema hypoalbuminemia albumin less than 3 gram per cl hyperlipidemia excess of lipid lipid urea lipid in urine no azotemia no hematuria or hypertension in nephrotic syndrome and we have also discussed the glomerular injury so what happens in kidney so when you get the nephrotic syndrome so whenever there is glomerular injury derangement of the capillary walls there is increased permeability of plasma proteins either due to some structural or physico chemical alteration so because of that the patient will have massive protein urea heavy loss of protein <coughs> protein urea which is usually albumin and reversal of albumin globulin ratio so what happens in it is so nephrotic syndrome is mainly because of the glomerular injury as well as derangement of capillary wall and increased permeability of plasma protein which could be structural or physico chemical alteration protein urea which is massive and that is long standing heavy loss protein urea usually in the form of albumin and there is reversal of albumin and globulin ratio because more of albumin is being lost so and the patient because of albumin loss will have hypoalbuminemia and also the patient will have loss of osmotic pressure and fluid accumulation in interstitial space there is drop in plasma volume and there is diminished glomerular filtration rate because of all this there is compensatory secretion of aldosterone which leads to retention of the salt and water by the kidney and massive edema leading to anosarca so finally the patient has hypoalbuminemia anemia hyperlipidemia lipiduria the patient has increased gbm permeability and, and impairment of protein so ultimately nephrotic syndrome the patient has so albuminemia lipiduria hyperlipidemia lipiduria increased gbm permeability impairment of peripheral breakdown of lipoproteins and increased synthesis of lipoprotein by the liver and the patient is vulnerable to the infections like staphylococci pneumococci due to the loss of immunoglobulin and the patient also has complication like thrombotic and thromboembolic complication 
due to the loss of coagulation factor, thrombotic complication, thromboembolic complication, and also that is renal vein thrombosis. So next class, we'll be discussing about the causes of nephrotic syndrome and in detail, all the types of glomerulopathies one by one. Okay, thank you so much. So we have just started nephrotic syndrome. We've already discussed about nephrotic. Briefly, we have just gone through. Next class, what are all the causes of nephrotic syndrome and the individually each type of glomerulonephritis we are going to talk. Thank you so much.